Hello humans, I'm Batsy, and today I bring you all a very special episode from the SMP, so get comfy and grab some popcorn, this is going to be an epic one. We are currently on a backup of the SMP where I removed all of the water with World Edit to plan out the terraforming. I thought it would be much easier to model the landscape if we could see a little bit better. And we didn't need to deal with water. I think the walls shouldn't be too hard to do, my plan is to transition it into a cliff or something like that, then maybe make a gradient texture so it gets darker the deeper it goes. I think that shouldn't be too hard, hopefully, I'm mostly worried about the ocean floor, I have some plan for that, which I guess you might have already seen on the thumbnail anyway. Oh, yes, my base looks a bit cursed, this is a rather naked version of the SMP so it doesn't really have any mods outside of Axiom and World Edit. Axiom is a somewhat new mod that does a very similar thing that World Edit. I have watched a couple of videos about it, and it looks incredibly promising. That said, I'm not really a World Edit user. I mean sure, I always try to have that mod in the server in case something big needs fixing, or like in Season 2 when I made the floating islands. But that was very basic world edit, I'm by no means good with it. Supposedly, Axiom is a whole lot better, and my hope is that I can learn to use it, and more importantly, learn to do organics. I really want to learn to do at least see creatures, and maybe play a bit with trees and terrain. So that's the plan for the next two weeks, learn to use Axiom, contact a band that has one of my favorite songs, and I think it's gonna fit perfectly for this video, and well, make the most epic terraforming montage ever. But as cool as all of that sounds, we need to start by learning how to even use the Axiom mod. I can see there are a bunch of functions in here, but I believe there should be a fancy panel with extra stuff. There we go, I found it. Oh, I just painted some stone. I will have to get used to these controls. But this is the menu, and let me tell you my initial reaction. This feels so much better and easy to use for a noob like me. I can already see that I can apply masks and everything, this is fantastic. Let's waste no time then, there is a lot to learn, and a lot more to build. My plan is to cover the entire ocean floor with a massive creature, so for now, I'm using concrete blocks like Play-Doh to get an idea of the proportions and all of that. If you sometimes see random shapes flashing, that's me figuring out the tools. But for now, I'm adding the bottom layer of what later will be the cliff itself, just to know what I'm working with. The center of the perimeter is meant to be the mouth of the creature, which by the way, the idea is to make some sort of kraken, or an eldritch creature of sorts. I guess something like in Star Wars where they try to throw them in a hole in the desert that has some spiky teeth coming out of it. That's roughly the main picture I have in my head. I'm failing to understand some of the tools I'm using for the mouth, so instead, I will be proceeding with the walls, there is no use in getting stuck in one part of it. I have seen people use the smooth tool and it looks really strong, so my plan is to mostly fill up the areas where I want the cliff to be, and later on I will be smoothing it all out so it looks better. Just the main walls look a bit simple so I want to keep adding more walls in certain areas so it looks more naturally generated. Now that I have most of the concrete in place, I can start to smooth things out, which like I seen in some videos, is super simple to use. I don't want to flame them too much, but for a noob like me, it feels a lot better than the world edit version of it. I guess the biggest difference is that you actually have an interface where you can easily click things and also you can very easily see what options are there. I know World Edit has crazy functions and brushes you can use, but it's hard when you are new to it, and the wiki is just an endless list of commands that are hard to understand. I'm not happy with how it's looking right now, it's a bit too bland, so what I'm doing is adding a lot more concrete with the sphere tool so I can smooth it out some more, really trying hard to add more texture and variation to the cliff. The smoothing tool is honestly making my job incredibly easy, so I want to keep adding more and more concrete to make it look cooler. It's really like using Play-Doh in a way. And it barely takes a couple of brushes of the smoothing tool to make it look amazing. 
I'm mostly happy with the cliff now, so I want to revisit the idea of the mouth. Instead of trying to dig the hole, I'm thinking about making the main shape with a bunch of spheres, which will serve as the gums, and maybe smooth it out later and add the teeth on them. I'm not convinced about this many teeth, nor the size of the hole, it looks too big, so I think I will go for bigger gums, for a much more narrow mouth. Which I think it looks much better if I'm honest. The tricky part now is to make it blend with the rest of the creature, because I think the mouth should be a bit poking out of the beast, but I'm making something entirely fictional, so I have no idea what anatomy is appropriate here. After smoothing it out enough, I think I'm starting to like this, the sphere is a bit too obvious, but I think this is poking out of the creature enough. I'm going to try to smooth it further, and see if I can remove the sphere look from it. I think I'm better off covering it further, and smoothing from there, it's getting hard to remove those spheres. In hindsight, this might have been too much, but hopefully smoothing it further improves it. Which is kinda getting there, it's starting to look more like gums and less like spheres. I don't dislike how this is looking, let's add one of the teeth, and see what we working on. It's tricky to get the proportions right, I think that ideally, I want to leave more room between the teeth, I think the mouth is meant to be open after all. Yes, this is looking good, really good. I'm going to leave it as is for now, and work on those tentacles, it will all depend on how they look, to know if I want to change the mouth further or not. My plan is what you can see, just add a bunch of spheres with a somewhat natural shape, and I'm going to smooth them later on. I'm honestly hoping that is that simple, but at least it's going to give me a rough idea of the scale of things. I love eating octopus, but to be honest with you, I normally don't pay too much attention to what natural shape they have, all I know is that they like to curl up, and they tend to bend a lot. The smoothing tool seems to work from any angle, which is honestly being the MVP of this entire project, at least so far. There is also the option to undo very easily, so that's also great, and useful since I'm blindly trying the tools at hand. Okay, this is not too bad. I definitely like where this is going. The mouth I think it's exactly what I had in mind. I doubt this is anatomically correct for anything, it doesn't even look functional if I'm honest, but it looks cool, and I like it. But for the tentacles, there are a few details that I'm not 100% sold on. For example, I will leave on screen the picture I'm using as a reference, and you can notice that the tentacles aren't completely smooth and round. The most left one is somewhat smoother, but then it has the suckers, which I didn't know they were called that way. But it has those suckers that kind of break the round shape, and I question whether that part that is covered by the suckers is flatter, because on the second drawing, the part where the suckers are is a different color, and it's definitely flatter than the rest of the tentacle. The problem right now is that I'm not too sure what direction to go. I could add very easily some suckers on the flat parts of the tentacles, but then when it comes to the diagonals, things start to get super tricky. Although that one doesn't look too bad now that I think about it. Well, the other concept I have in mind is that this isn't necessarily a cephalopod, but on a much bigger scale. I'm also looking at pictures of eldritch types of creatures and stuff like that. And those do have pretty bubbly and round tentacles almost like slimy tentacles. Which is more like what is going on right now. I definitely think that I want to polish the design further, but I'm unsure of what direction I want to go for, if super smooth like an eldritch tentacle, or make it more flat on one side like apparently squids are. I think I'm going to sit on this design for tonight, and tomorrow hopefully I have decided how to proceed with it. Two very quick updates. Starting next week we going to be playing a new event in the server, which, I guess it doesn't have a name yet, but we are basically going to group of in pairs or small groups, and we will have one month to build a town together. After a month of building, we will have happy to give a little tour around the towns, and judge which one is better. What better means exactly will depend on happy. It is gonna be a friendly competition, 
and I don't think any of us is gonna take it super seriously, but I think it's gonna be fun to see what exactly will each group focus on. So stay tuned for those videos, and also happy streams which happen every Sunday and Monday afternoon, but I will be more formally announcing the event stream when we get closer to that date. The second quick update I wanted to make is that I have been decently active on my throne account. I have been trying my best to not buy anything that I don't need immediately, and instead, just adding it there. I like the idea a lot of giving the option to gift something, instead of just giving away money. It also feels a bit more personal, because this way you can see where the money went, and I'm making sure to add little descriptions of what I thought at the time. Like this pajamas, I just thought it was super cute, and it looks incredibly comfy to use. I don't know, to me at least it feels more personal, it was unnerving at first to publicly show my shopping list, but I think I'm kinda starting to like it. But enough babbling, let's go back to the video. But I lived by the dice and the cards in my hands But the goddess of fortune seemed loath of the sea There were none of the crew who was poorer than me I was walking the deck on a cold starry night When the shape of a spectre appeared in my sight he said, I am Jones and I've seen your demise I've been moved by your suffering, I will help you rise I'll make you richest of all of your crew In return I require a promise from you When your sand has run out When your time here is through You'll sign up for me without further ado I complied and I signed with my blood on 
There's a wind out of nowhere that's filling my sails There's a sprinkling of frost building up on the rails I'm his fool, you see, and he's laughing at me Down below, in a bottomless chasm I'm his sailor to be, and he's waiting for me Down below, down below, down below I'm his fool, you see, and he's laughing at me Down below, in the bottomless chasm I'm his sailor to me, and he's waiting for me Down below, down below, down below Down below, down below, down below Down below, down below Well, that really was quite something, wasn't it? What an amazing video to work on. All the thanks to Stormfront, which I hope I'm saying it right, for letting me use this amazing song, their links and everything will be on the description, definitely check them out, they really deserve it. As for me, I was gonna make a little tour around it, but instead, let me tell you a story. Some of you might remember that back in season 1, I already dug a massive hole on a lake, and I was planning on making an underwater city. The world got corrupted in too many levels, and I had to ditch that project, but that wasn't the first time I have tried to do it. I love the sea, I love pirates, and sailor movies. I think that there is something super cool and romantic about those stories. I attempted this project many times, and it always felt too big and daunting. But in a way, I'm glad that I never succeeded, and I'm glad that season 1 got corrupted. Because if I would have completed the project back then, I wouldn't have wanted to redo it again a year later, and that would have meant that I would have never included this amazing song into the project. The waiting and failures were definitely worth it to make it where I am now, at the start of an amazing project that I really hope I will be able to complete through the year. I just finished the terraforming which means that there are still a ton of buildings and fishes, and cool things to build on it. But that will be a story for another day, for now, thank you so much for watching my favorite episode that I ever made, and I hope to see you all next time.